Hello, I'm Robin Vincent and welcome to my build of the Deckard's Dream. The Deckard's Dream is an extraordinary analog polyphonic synthesizer designed by Roman Filipov that attempts to capture the essence of the old Yamaha CS80. The CS80 was this behemoth of a synthesizer, all with kind of a bit of a, an organ type layout. It was huge, it was heavy, it had lots of sliders and paddles, and was one of the first and probably the most innovative polyphonic analog synthesizers of its time. It was a synthesizer used extensively by Van Gelis in his scoring of Blade Runner, and has become a bit of a famous synthesizer purely for the movement and essence and emotion and something in that sound. Now back when I was a kid, I was a huge Van Gelis fan. I would listen to instrumental music all the time and Van Gelis was a big part of that. China was a, a, a piece of vinyl that I almost wore out on my turntable and I've been forever in search myself for that, that pad of sounds, that soundscape, that level of electronic noise that just seems to swell and pull and draw things out of your very soul. It's been that that has led me down a path of electronic music, of ambient music, even though I've traveled to other places through rock and folk and grunge and all sorts of other nasty sort of places, but I find myself drawn back to the warm embrace of that sound. And it's a sound perhaps that's encapsulated in that Blade Runner soundtrack. Well, in the film itself, because the sound and the music are very much part of the film. They're not a separate thing. It's not a, oh, nice soundtrack. It's integral. It's absolutely part of that vision of Los Angeles, that vision of that time and that place. Uh, everything about it is folded and woven through the music. And subsequently, Blade Runner is one of my favorite films of all time. So when the Decker's Dream came about, when it first started to, to arise, there was this little film that they did, this teaser, that just set the scene perfectly. It was filmed, I think, in Tokyo, which is perfect for it. And it was just this, this dream. This dream, the inside of, of somebody's head was being brought forward onto the screen and it felt like Blade Runner. It felt like Vangelis. It felt like the CS80. And it's just brilliant, and I was immediately blown away by it because you're putting together my favorite artist, my favorite soundscape, my favorite movie, bringing all these things together brilliantly in this perfectly pitched little piece of film to introduce the idea of Deckard's dream. But this is not a budget synthesizer. Oh no, this is a, a proper, properly priced synthesizer. I mean, initially when it first arrived, they were taking pre-orders for about a grand and I was going, oh wow, that's fantastic. Let's get, let's get into that. But what I didn't realize was that the grand was just a deposit. It was a deposit pre-order and you'd be charged another two and a half grand once the thing was ready. So yeah, a meaty, expensive synthesizer. It looked fantastic. I mean, I'm not particularly into the, into the whole rack thing particularly, but it was neat, tidy, timeless, I think. All the sliders and the colors on that was like, ooh, yeah. Now, I've had an opportunity to play on one. Uh, I spent a bit of time at Toman and they had one in the shop there and I sat down with it. And it is every bit as mystical as it appears. As in, could I get any sound out of it? Yes, yes, I could, but it wasn't easy. It required thought. It required, okay, so what is this? And what is this doing? I mean, you're talking about multiple voices all being affected by these two layers of synthesizer going on. I mean, I'm not going to be able to explain this properly until I have one and have delved really deeply into it, because I've never had a CS80. I've played with plugins and virtual versions, sure, but you're just preset surfing on that kind of thing. To actually get into it as a synthesizer is going to take a little bit of deep thought, time, energy, probably some magic. But that's fine because I think it's the sort of synthesizer that's worth it. But having sat down with it for, 
40 minutes an hour as I did, I came away feeling that this is an extraordinary thing, that there's sound and potential in here, which I would very much enjoy teasing and pulling and exploring. Well, luck would have it that Black Corporation, who look after the Deckard's Dream, had got in touch with me and they said that they enjoyed the little videos I made, little DIY videos that I, that I do here. And they say, would I like to do a DIY video on the Decker's Dream? I said, yes, absolutely. Who, what? Yes, completely. And they said, well, let us send you the kit and, and, and you can give it a go. That would be great. I said, what, really? Okay, yeah, okay then. So uh, they said that they would. So I, I went and sat down, <laughs> had a stiff drink and thought, cool, wow. That would be amazing. I mean, this is a serious synthesizer. And they, and they reckon that seeing my meagre skills on the videos that I've done already, that I would be capable of putting this bad boy together. <laughs> awesome. Right. So, I mean, a complete, and it was completely out of the blue. Although, was it? I mean, a while ago, a couple of years ago, when they first released the Deco's Dream, I think I dropped them an email saying, oh, you know, I make videos about synthesizers and I'd love to make one about the Deco's Dream. Do you fancy sending me one? <laughs> and I didn't really ever expect them to say anything. And they kind of laughed at me a little bit, in a friendly way, saying, yeah, yeah, all right, maybe. And so this was actually a couple of years later, they got back in touch and said, yeah, I think we're ready now. And I think that uh, you do a good job. So, so there you go. So eagerly I waited because it hasn't come all the way over from Japan and uh, waiting for the kit to turn up and thought, this is going to be brilliant. This is going to be brilliant. And I had not looked into it in any depth whatsoever at this point. I was just eagerly sitting there expecting this thing to come. And then it did in a fabulously black box. Oh, yes. But when I opened it up, right, with trembling hands, what I found, which are awesome, of course, is just a collection of PCBs. <laughs> There's not a single component, not a sausage. I had completely assumed that the kit, the kit meant the whole lot. Like you get, you know, I've got another kit here, like, for instance, like the Chopping Kinky from Befaco. It's got everything in there, PCBs, all the components, all the resistors, you know, everything you need to make it is in the bag. With the Deco's Dream Kit, no, 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 it's just the PCBs. W what? But that's what they have, they, they have the PCBs and it's that that they sent to me. And the understanding is that I will then source all the other parts myself, because that's what people do. They buy the PCBs and then they source the parts and they build the thing. That's all part of the deal. It's just that it has escaped me completely. <laughs> So I was a little bit flummoxed and then started looking into it a little bit deeper, as you do, and found the kit on the website with just the PCBs. Oh, right. So, so it is just that. It is just PCBs. And so then what do I do? Well, then I found the bill of materials, the big list of lots and lots and lots of components and wondered how on earth am I going to achieve this? Now, thankfully, there are ways and means. There's a, a shop in the States that sells an entire component kit. You can buy the whole lot and they'll send it to you. And you can also buy the case. It didn't come with the case or the front panel either. Those are other things I'm going to have to source. And there are a couple of places that do those. So after initially thinking they're just going to give me a three and a half thousand dollar synthesizer. No, they've given me I mean, a thousand dollars worth of PCB, which is flipping awesome, but then have tasked me <laughs> with the job of sourcing and getting all the bits together and building it. I mean, it's one heck of a challenge. There's no way, no way that I have the time or knowledge or know-how or ability, skills, talent to do any of this. But Bob at Black Corporation says, give it a go, mate. Give it a go, he reckons I could do it. So buoyed up by that kind of uh, encouragement, I'm just gonna have to give it a go. And this is my introduction to this journey because I haven't started it. Just got it here. We'll have a look at the PCBs in a moment. And this is as far as I've got. I've opened the box and looked at them. Now the journey begins. First of all, in sourcing parts. I mean, that's going to be interesting. And as I said, you can buy the whole lot as a bundle. But I think, although I may ultimately do that, I would like to go through the process of seeing what happens when I source my own parts. Would it end up being a lot cheaper if I went to 
uh, Farnell or, or RSS or somewhere like that and went through and individually picked out all the value resistors and capacitors and bits and pieces that I need. Is that going to end up saving a whole bunch of money? Maybe. So that's worth looking at. It's also worth looking at joining up with a few other people who are also building it in order to get the cost down by buying more in bulk. Although I don't know that the price of three resistors as opposed to one resistor really makes all that difference. But who knows, there's another thing I want to look into along the way. And then I will just chart my progress as I start soldering the thing together. There's a lot of components. A lot. An awful lot. I mean, it boggles my mind. I mean, I've had to do this introduction just purely to kickstart me because I'm, uh, I'm scared, I think. And I think by doing this and getting this out there, it's a good way to push me into action to get this thing done. Because at the end of the day, I'll be left with a flipping phenomenal synthesizer. So it's worth it, absolutely worth it. I've just got to get my head around the amount of time it might take me to do it. So I've got my little booth over here as the plan. I've cleared out a section and I'm going to dedicate this to DIY, both little projects and this as well, so that I can have this up all the time. And every time I've got a spare hour, I can sit down and do a bit more soldering. Because, I mean, realistically, this is going to take me six months. <laughs> Which is interesting. Very interesting. But we shall see. Who knows? The other thing that interests me is whether you can do it without... I mean, first of all, I don't have particular soldering skills. I can solder. I have soldered. And I guess you get better with practice. But I don't have any special gear. I mean, I've got, you know, a crappy 20 quid soldering iron. It's not too crappy. 20 quid's a lot to spend on a soldering iron uh, that I got from Amazon, I guess. I've got a sort of thing holding, holding things. I've got uh, a copper thing that you jam your thing in. That's, that's about it. That's the gear I have. Now, I know I'm going to have to buy some tweezers because there is a tiny, small amount of surface mount on this, which is something I've never done before. So I have to look into that. I might have to look into getting some more solder because I might have run out with my other projects. But that's it. I've got this green mat because it's, I don't know, it's supposed to be anti-static, but I don't have it plugged in to an earth or anything. But anyway, it's just something to work on. So that's all I've got. Oh yeah, I've got a bit of a light here with a, with a, you know, I've got a magnifying glass on this side. I don't know if that'll help. I've had that for years knocking around. Who knows? I'm just gonna have to give it a go. So let's look at what's in the box. Well, let's get, oh, bits of paper, uh, a bunch of stickers. Yeah, stickers, they're nice. Oh, ah, we'll start off with the big boards here. See what these are. So this is the sort of thing we're talking about. This. <laughs> Just look at it. Wow. I mean, this is obviously the front PCB. This way up, probably. I don't know. It'll have all the sliders on it. So all the sliders will get on there. Just lots and lots and lots of them. Lots of sliders, lots of ICs. Yeah, I mean, as they go, this panel looks like the least complicated, I have to say. So it's that panel. It's beautiful, isn't it? I mean, it's, this black and gold is just lovely. Absolutely lovely. Get the little screen, goes on here. Oh, it's such a thing. And then behind that goes this, which I assume is the main board. Now this, <laughs> look at that. Look at that. What am I going to do? And this already had some surface mount stuff on it. All these chips here are already placed. Thank goodness. But this is where the voice cards are going to go. So these are like PCI slots. So those have all got to be filled and then the, the voice cards go into those. But there's a lot. Rows of resistors. <laughs> that way up probably. Say Black Corporation it says there. Deckard's Dream Motherboard. 
revision 2.1. That's what we're on. That's a thing. That's a thing. And then in this little group here, these are the voice cards, each one. So it's eight voice synthesizer. And so you have a card for each voice of polyphony. That makes sense. It's like eight synthesizers, I suppose, because that's how polyphony works within a box. <laughs> it's just covered. There's a lot, there's a lot on there. I mean, look at all those holes. That's amazing. Absolutely amazing. And these are gonna slot into the motherboard. And it's on here, I think, which is where the surface mount capacitors are found. But no doubt I'm gonna work that out as it happens. So I've got eight of those, eight. And then there's a, whatever this is, a power board. I know there's a couple of other bits and pieces in there as well. So that, that is the project. That is the Descartes dream. That is the selection of PCBs. And that's what I'm gonna to have to be working with. So exciting days. I mean, I'm really looking forward to putting it together, to getting started, to, well, no, I'm not really looking forward to sorting the components. That's not, it doesn't sound like fun to me, but I'm up for it because, yeah, they've entrusted me with a good chunk of gear. They've sent me hardware, which is worth a lot of money to them. And so in respect of that, I'll do my best to do a good job. I might be rubbish. It might be a disaster. It might not work at the end of the day. We just don't know, but I'm up for giving it a go. So thank you. This is my introduction to my Decker's Dream build. And in part two, I'll start looking at how on earth you source the components to make it into a reality. All right, so in the meantime, go make some tunes.